good morning children we are starting the new chapter that is biomolecules we are starting the new chapter biomolecules in this chapter we would be discussing about certain important molecules which are of day to day importance for our daily life so now the question comes what are biomolecules now the question comes what are biomolecules biomolecules are the complex organic substances like carbohydrate proteins etc which combine to produce in living system and maintain its biological functions okay so i can say biomolecules are macromolecules which are naturally occurring in the biological system which actually combine to a specific manner to produce living system and maintain it are called as biomolecules the branch of chemistry that deals with the study of the chemical reactions the branch of chemistry that deals with the study of the chemical reactions that occur in the living organism is called as biomolecules so once again i would like to repeat it that biomolecules are those specific biomolecules are those specific organic substances like carbohydrates proteins which combine in a specific manner to produce in the living system certain amount of energy and helps in the maintenance of all the activities the branch of chemistry that deals with the study of these chemical reactions that occur in living organisms are called as biomolecules they are called as biomolecules now the first biomolecules that we are going to discuss is about carbohydrates now the question is what are carbohydrates they are actually optically active polyhydroxy aldehydes or ketones so they are optically active polyhydroxy aldehydes or ketones okay or the compounds which produce or the compounds which produce which produce such units on hydrolysis that is we get a c6h12o6 that is the simplest unit of the hydrolysis of a carbohydrate okay so these are the polyhydroxy aldehydes or ketones of substances which give these substances on hydrolysis and contain at least one chiral carbon okay it contains one chiral carbon right so just remember it should have at least one carbon chiral they have a general formula CXH2X okay CXH2 this is the general formula of a carbohydrate now see the raf ramnose deoxyribose ramnohexose do not obey the formula but are carbohydrate so there is a i have told you that they have a general formula this is a general formula but apart from the general formula they actually have many sugars which do not follow this formula and yet they are sugar in nature Now types of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are of three basic types: monosaccharide, oligosaccharides, and polysaccharides. They are of three types: monosaccharide, oligosaccharide, and that of polysaccharides. Now we are going to study the classification of carbohydrate. In that, the first study we are going to do is the study of this simplest carbohydrates and that is called the monosaccharides they are the simplest carbohydrates that are called the monosaccharides now they are the simplest carbohydrates which can't be hydrolyzed further into smaller compounds so just remember monosaccharides are the simplest unit of carbohydrates which cannot be further hydrolyzed into smaller compounds they are called as aldose or ketose depending upon whether they have a aldehydic or ketonic group just remember if they can they contain aldehyde group they are called as aldose if they contain a ketonic group they are called as ketose now depending upon number of carbon atom present they are also called as triose or tetrose so just remember monosaccharides are the simplest carbohydrates that cannot be further broken down into smaller units on hydrolysis examples you see example is one example is called as called as that is called as glucose which is actually aldohexose with while the fructose is a ketohexose both of them have six carbon atoms and they are simple monosaccharide in nature they are simple monosaccharide in nature 
the simplest monosaccharide is triose why it is triose because it contains n equal to 3 that that is number of n as you could see from this formula is value of n becomes 3 then that is called as triose example see glycerol dehyde and dihydroacetone they have one or more asymmetric carbon and are optically active they have one or more asymmetric carbon and they are optically active okay their structures are represented as follows see the structure here we have the structure of diglyceraldehyde and dehydroacetone as you could see in the diglyceraldehyde we have aldehyde group in the aldehyde group we have carbon double bond o and hydrogen and in this we have this group coh h and ch2 o so this is called as diglyceraldehyde we have the next one as dihydroxyacetone next one is dihydroxyacetone as you could see there is a ketonic group ch2oh group and ch2oh group so in this compound you could see it is a total symmetrical one where you have a ketonic one ch2oh and ch2oh group okay that is dihydroxyacetone configuration all naturally occurring monosaccharides belong to the d series that is oh group at this penultimate carbon atom that is oh group is present at the penultimate carbon so you could see that oh is always present at the last one okay now the open chain structure see open chain structure of glucose has this type of structure just see we have a ch2 group we have a ch2 so how many carbon are there in total there are six carbon see carbon 1 carbon 2 carbon 3 carbon 4 carbon 5 and carbon 6 right see the last carbon sixth carbon has ch2oh the first carbon also have ch2oh right now in the second carbon we have a ketonic carbon ketonic group here we have oh and h here h and oh h and oh and they are alternating with each other right ch2oh in the case of fructose we have ch2oh see here the structure of fructose it is actually aldehyde group in the glucose one we have the ketonic group in the fructose we have the aldehyde group aldehyde group is at the end of the chain this is carbon number 1 contains aldehyde carbon carbon 2 contains oh carbon 3 contains oh carbon 4 5 and 6 all of them contains oh but carbon 6 of glucose and fructose are similar so we can see carbon 6 in both they of them has the same configuration see the figure both of them carbon 6 has the same configuration okay carbon 5 also same configuration carbon 4 or same configuration carbon 3 also same configuration okay so carbon 3 4 5 and 6 the configuration is same. configuration is actually same but in carbon 2 here we have alkali group here we have ketonic group carbon 1 we aldehyde group carbon 1 here we have a alkali group okay this is how the configuration of glucose and fructose takes place okay after that see in case of this variety of glucose that is called as d glucose and d nanos differ only in the configuration of carbon 2 are known as epimers can you see carbon 2 configuration is different so it so they are called as epimers similarly d glucose and d galactose differ in con configuration around carbon 4 and are known as epimers thus a pair of diastereomers differing only in configuration around the carbon 2 of any other chiral carbon are called as epimers so now the question comes what are epimers epimers are those isomers which actually differ in the configuration of one of the carbon other configuration remains same that is called as epimer after that we have the close chain structure in the, in the close chain structure what we see all the pentose and hexose exist in cyclic hemiacetal structure in the free state they exist in a cyclic hemiacetal structure in the free state they are generally six members of cyclic structure known as pyranose form okay and to, to the combined state some of them have five member cyclic structure they are called as hex hexose so one is five member other is six member so i'm repeating it once again children in order for you to understand see all the pentoses and the hexoses they exist in the cyclic hemiacetal structure okay and in the free state they have generally 
six member cyclic structure known as pyranose form and in the combined state some of them have five member cyclic structure called as furanose due to their cyclic hemiacetal or hemiketal structure all the pentanose hexanose exist in two stereomeric form that is alpha form beta form both alpha and beta form are known as anomers both alpha form beta form are known as anomers and their structure is given below as you could see this structure okay this is the exact structure here we could see that it is a six member ring in which one of the corners is occupied by oxygen here we have ch2 oh h here we have this oh groups are present as you could see see this oh group is present over here and here also we have as you could see oh is present over here h is present here h oh see these two h oh are in the similar plane here oh and h is different plane here also put this oh and h is in the same plane as that of this carbon 1 carbon 2 and carbon 4 and here we have ch2 oh and h this is actually the alpha glucose structure and the alpha glucose structure looks like this alpha glucose structure looks like this okay then we have the next one is called beta glucose in case of beta glucose see the change is only in the oh upside down see these two structure this oh portion has been made blue in order to make you understand where the oh is located okay where the oh is located now these carbohydrates on hydrolysis give two to nine molecules of monosaccharide so now we are going to discuss about disaccharide in case of di saccharide what we know that they are carbohydrates on hydrolysis that gives 2 to 9 molecules of monosaccharide 2 to 9 molecules of monosaccharides they are further of few types that is disaccharide trisaccharide and tetrasaccharide and what is a disaccharide disaccharide the general formula is C12H22O11 on hydrolysis they give two <laughs> molecules of glucose and they are bounded together by a glycosidic linkage so just remember in case of disaccharides there are two glucose units they are joined together by a glycosidic linkage example is sucrose example is sucrose next we have trisaccharide c18 h32o16 c18 h32o16 on hydrolysis they form three molecules of glucose example is raffinose example is actually raffinose okay after that we have tetrasaccharide in case of tetrasaccharide what we know the general formula is c24 h42 o21 c24 h42 o1 so what i could see the ratio of hydrogen and oxygen in each of the cases is 2 is to 1 see whether it is in case of trisaccharide or in case of tetrasaccharide or in case of disaccharide the ratio of hydrogen oxygen is 2 is to 1 such as statue such as statues which gives four monosaccharide units which give four monosaccharide units so that was about the oligosaccharide because oligosaccharides are those polysaccharide those carbohydrates which on hydrolysis gives 2 to 10 units of monosaccharide units okay it gives you 2 to 10 units of monosaccharide units after that we are going to discuss about polysaccharide what are polysaccharides these are the carbohydrates which in hydrolysis yield more than 10 monosaccharide units yield more than 10 monosaccharide units example is starch example is starch okay after that children we are going to discuss about polysaccharides what are polysaccharides these are the carbohydrates which in hydrolysis yield more than 10 number of glucose simple glucose sugar units okay so they are called as polysaccharide example is starch example is cellulose now we are going to discuss importance of carbohydrates in our day-to-day -day life see carbohydrates act as biofuels to provide energy for the functioning of the living system so just remember that 
carbohydrate acts as bio fuels and they provide energy for the functioning of the living system that is they give 2832 kilojoule energy carbohydrates are used as storage molecules as starch in plants and glycogen animals deoxyribose deoxyribose or that is called as ribose deoxyribose or that is called as ribose deoxyribose or that is called as ribose that is actually one of the important constraint of dna or rna cellulose acts as structural material of cell walls of bacteria and plants so just remember they act as structural materials for bacteria and other types of plants carbohydrate provide raw materials for many important industry like textile industry paper industry lacquer industry and that is called as breweries now we will discuss about muta rotation what is muta rotation in case of glucose it exists in two forms alpha d glucose which have a specific rotation which have a specific rotation of 112 degree and beta d glucose which have a specific rotation of plus 19 degree so these are the different angles of rotation however when either of these two forms is dissolve in water and allowed to scan it gets converted into into small equilibrium mixture of both the alpha and beta form with a small amount of open chain form having a specific rotation of 52.7 degrees so just remember in case of muted rotation what we see however when either of these two forms is dissolved in water and allowed to scan it gets converted into the same equilibrium mixture of both the alpha and the beta form with a small amount of open chain form having a specific rotation of 52.7 degree okay it has this specific rotation of 52.7 degree so that is actually called the muta rotation as the result of this equilibrium the specific rotation of the freshly prepared solution of alpha glucose decreases from 112 degree to 52.7 degree while for beta glucose it increases to plus 19 to 52.7 degree okay this is how it decreases and increases the phenomenon of change of charge is a specific rotation optically active compound with time to time in equilibrium value is known as its muta rotation so as you could see over this structure that in case of alpha d glucose and beta glucose differ in configuration of carbon 1 it differs in configuration of that of carbon 1 so as you could see over here if i enlarge the diagram you can just see in case of alpha glucose and beta glucose where is the basic difference see here it is HOH, here it is OH and H, that is in opposite direction. See the position of the OH group. Here the OH group is HOH, here it is OH, H, okay. Here it has OH, here it is OH, it is H, OH and H. In this way, alpha glucose and beta glucose, they exist. So, alpha D glucose and beta D glucose differs in configuration. At differing in configuration, carbon call are they are called as anomers. They are called as anomers. As they differ in configuration, they are called as anomers. That is how the structure actually exists. Okay. See the configuration in both the cases there is a great difference the difference is OHC here they have mentioned OH over here here the OH is here so here upside down here it is H on the top and OH so both these OH have same configuration but here it has opposite configuration okay that is where the basic difference lies between these two after that we have next one that is called fructose it is represented by a six member ring as shown below see the six member ring in case of beta d fructose and furanose structure 
see carbon 6 in both the cases is 7 same carbon 5 in both the cases is same carbon 4 is also same carbon 3 so 3 4 5 6 we have the same configuration but in carbon 2 we have a ketonic group here carbon 2 we have a OH hydroxy group in this case we have a CH2OH group here we have H and this this one so this configuration actually confirms beta D fructose and furanose B structure so fructose is assigned a furanose structure fructose is assigned as furanose structure this is how the structure exists okay children that was all for the day thank you